Let us not forget everything that happens. It's by the will of Allah. Holy it's time to unite and stand, and we will be the best amongst men. It's not time to be extreme or duty unthinkable, but to stand together as one. Turn into sooner followers, streaming. Every day, various platforms, trust me, you'll find a way, soon the followers. Assalamu alaikum, please mark your calendars. Starting this Friday, March 1st, we will be replacing the 6 p.m. Eastern Akita class, al Wala Walabara class, with a special program for the month of Ramadan. Please join Ustada Leila Nasheba for the first seven days of Ramadan with a preparation course. Allow her to walk you every day after that with the thick of fasting. Don't forget, mark your calendars, and we're streaming it right here on Sunnah Followers. Ina alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam ala wa rasulullah. I like to first of all uh, congratulate everyone who's listening to me uh, for making it to another year of life. <laughs> I tell my students all the time, there's no such thing as an Islamic New Year. We all know that this has nothing to do with re uh, religion or worship and Allah, none of that stuff. Okay, but um, if there would have been an Islamic New Year for us Muslims, it would have been Ramadan. Ramadan would have uh, marked the beginning of the new year for us as Muslims. Why? Because Ma Ramadan is the most special month of the year for us as Muslims. It's the month of change. It's the month of new beginnings. It's the month of forgiveness, the month of self-evaluation. Ramadan, for those of us who truly uh, uh, have ignited or awakened the fitra of our hearts, for those of us whose fitra has been reawakened, Ramadan is the month of evolvement. You should be able to look at yourself right now. This is the first day of Ramadan. Every Muslim should be able to look at himself or look at herself and ask, ask yourself, you know, have I changed for the better? Am I a better person this year than I was last year? You should be able to look at yourself and see your growth. Has my fitra been furnished and nourished? Is my fitra closer to Allah this year than it was last year. SubhanAllah. Allah. I hope the answer is yeah, everyone here. I hope it really is because again, you want to see yourself growing each year. You want to see yourself getting better each year. You want to see yourself becoming a stronger, uh, better believer. You don't want to see yourself weakening. If you look at yourself right now today, and compare yourself today to how you were last Ramadan, and you say, wow, last Ramadan, I didn't smoke cigarettes. Last Ramadan, you know, uh, I used to pray more. Last Ramadan, man, you know, I was a happier person. Last Ramadan, I did more good deeds. If you see that you have not increased or bettered yourself as a believer, as a human being, then that's when you know you got some work to do, some serious work. Well, alhamdulillah, Ramadan is the, the month of working on ourselves. you know? So alhamdulillah, I want you guys to uh, join me on this journey. I want you guys to attend this class with me every day during the month of Ramadan. You should be co coming to this class every day of the year because this is our Aqidah class normally. 
you know, but for the month of Ramadan, I guess if I were to name it, it would be a thicker, the thicker of fasting because at the six o'clock class during the month of Ramadan for the past, uh, since 1986, when I've been teaching it, it's always focused on uh, the, nothing but uh, uh, understanding how to better your relationship with Allah through fasting. Okay, so for those of you who are weak, if you attend this class with an open heart, I can guarantee to you that you will find by the end of Ramadan that your Iman has increased so much, okay? You will feel closer to Allah. You will feel more confident in yourself as a Muslim. You'll become a better human being. Your fitra, that inner light of the heart will be awakened to the point that it feels like it can conquer the world. If you really come here wanting that, wanting to join us in this journey of closeness towards the law. And so today what I'm going to do is uh, speak about um, uh, how to make the most of this month. I always start uh, the month of Ramadan off with my students, you know, by letting them know that there are certain uh, things to, that we can do that will help us to reap the rewards of this, this beautiful month. And there are certain things that we should also avoid. And uh, for the parents here, I hope the children, uh, again, my classes are family friendly. We're G, not PG, we're G. So put us on the big screen TV. For those of you who have children at home, especially your daughters, turn the TV on, you know, and put me on channel, look for channel Sunify. We got our own channel. Oh yeah, our own YouTube channel on TV. Oh yeah, called uh, Sunna Followers. You'll be able to see me live. You'll be able to hear yourself live too. And by the way, if you want to use the microphone, uh, 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 to, to talk or to answer the questions or whatnot, or to participate or ask a question, you can join our Zoom room. Then the link is right there at the bottom, www.soonerfollowers.net. Click where it says Zoom room. You don't need a passcode. It'll bring you directly into it on your phone, your tablet, or whatever you have. If you don't have Zoom on your phone or tablet, it'll download it for you, okay? And uh, uh, also, I want to remind everybody, Ramadan is the month of charity. That means whatever you give for the sake of Allah, it's rewarded up to over 700 times. We are a nonprofit organization and uh, you know we are always in need of donations to help uh, cover uh, the, the website expenses which come to streaming. You all know how much streaming is 300. You know, the, the videos that the programs we use to put them out. Y'all see the commercials we're making and all that. You know, uh, I have a brother, Amon, to help me with the SEO. So, you know, please support us. You know, please uh, support us at the top of this stream. You see, you can go to www.paypal.me slash followers to make a donation. Or you can uh, uh, zell it. Zell it to uh, Layla at SoonerFollowers.net. L-A-I-L-A -A at SoonerFollowers.net. Okay, please support us, guys. And by the way, let me do this too. I'm going to, I found out I can do this. I'm going to type the link here too. And, oh, no, wrong one. <laughs> PayPal me. And you know what they told me on the TV? One of the cheering, one of the children told me that if you watch us on the Sooner Followers TV, you know, big screen, you can see the chat box too. Did y'all know that, fam mate? One of the kids, uh, uh, Brother Little Ibrahim told me that. He's, yeah, you can. I didn't know that because I never watched myself on TV. <laughs> but y'all can even see the chat box for the kids. So for the parents, please put us on the TV for the kids. That holds their attention. They like to see it on the big screen. For you parents, continue to use your phone or your laptop so you can screenshot because the only thing you cannot do on TV is screenshot. And I want you guys to screenshot my PowerPoints so you can print them out 
at the end of the class, staple them together and have them as a little booklet to review. Okay. So with that said, and I hope you guys like my background. That's my uh, Ramadan background. I made it myself. <laughs> and I'm proud of myself because I am not artistic, you know, but I put that background together myself. All right. So, but anyway, let me put the PowerPoint up so we can get started because I know uh, for those of you fasting on the East Coast, what time do y'all break fast? Because, you know, I ain't going to be able to break. I'm going to break it, but I won't be able to eat until after the class so I can cook. But uh, what time is you fast broken today? 7.30? What is it? East Coast? New York is East Coast, Chicago, East Coast, Cleveland, Carmetta. What time we break fast? Sunday comes, 7.31. Oh, girl, I got to get moving. That's so. It's almost, it's 7.06. Girl, let me get busy, y'all. So I don't want to mess up y'all. And tomorrow, inshallah, my class won't be late like this. Inshallah, this was the first day I overslept, you know, all that crazy stuff. But uh, tomorrow to be at six, inshallah, so I can cook and break my fast right too. Just remind me, Carmela, when it's time so I can break it. If I go over, hold on. Uh, let me take. Okay, everything. inshallah. Yeah, let me take everything down so um, I can put the PowerPoint up here so y'all can see. Okay. All right, here we go. Let me start it up. Yeah, I want to start you guys off, you know, with a good Ramadan. That's what the little the sisters are asking me here. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you for that that kind word. She said that she likes coming to me during Ramadan because I always uh, start you. Uh, she said I have a way of putting you in the mood of fasting. Mashallah. Maybe that'll be some vodka for me. Because I tell you, I got to put myself in the mood too. I'm telling y'all, and I'm feeling messed up. Waking up so late. Hold on for a second. Uh, let me share you guys, the people here. This is allowed. And now let me come back to this. Oh, did I share you guys on? No, I didn't. Hold on, guys. Let me start it over. Y'all would look at the sooner follower thing. I did it wrong. Ramadan. Got that crazy brain. Now, that's for them. And now let me come back to this and share you guys on YouTube to hear, allow. Okay, what's happening with my screen here, y'all? It's not, oh, oh, there it is. I had this in the way. Okay, I'm sorry. That Ramadan brain, fasting brain, I'm sorry, guys. I had the thing in the, in the way where I couldn't see. Okay, so here we go. Yeah. Inshallah, everybody should be able to see. The people on YouTube, y'all can see this too? Can they see my um, PowerPoint on YouTube? Yes, we can. Okay. Because I'm on. The telegram is lagging like crazy. Let me join YouTube on my phone. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I see it on YouTube. I don't know what's going on with the uh, other one. And I see they put the live chat to the side on YouTube too. Okay. So alhamdulillah, guys, this is the first day of fasting. As we talked about yesterday, the moon was seen per the sunnah of the prophet. The prophet didn't look for no local sightings. Any, he like he says in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, if one Muslim anywhere in the world that's reliable, says they've seen the moon, they've seen it for us all. When the people came from Syria, they said, oh, prophet of Allah, why are you fasting? We saw the moon a day ago. The prophet ordered the Muslims to break their fast. Okay, that hadith is authentic. It's in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari. So it ain't no local sightings. I don't know where that come from. I told y'all where it came from. It was a one-time deal and it wasn't from the prophet. But uh, for those Muslims that's doing that, that's your business. That's between you and Allah. But Ramadan officially began today because the moon was seen in Australia and Malaysia and Indonesia and that country that where the people been suffering forever, Brunei. 
okay? Long before it got to Arabia, okay? So anyway, we're fasting. So today what I'm gonna do is speak about how to gain the most from this month. You don't want this month to pass you by and you walk away bankrupt. You walk away with nothing from, no benefit from it. And by the way, this will also help to uh, perk you up and make you want to fast. So let's look at the PowerPoints here. During this month, this is the month of renewing your commitment to Allah. That's what we have to focus on. This month, we will be renewing our commitment to Allah, both inwardly and outwardly. And how do we do that? We renew our commitment to Allah by performing our prayers, by reading, and by doing away with things that need to be done away with and through reflection. Let's talk about it. What do we mean when we say renew our commitment to Allah through prayer? Even though you do not have to pray the, vol the voluntary prayers, it is not obligatory to pray the Sunnah prayers at all. Even the Tara we prayer is not an obligation, guys. But we do it for the reward. It brings us closer to Allah. So by praying more, that renews your commitment. Remember, when we declare la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, we are declaring allegiance to his prophet, religious religion and allegiance to all the Muslims, no matter what color they are, what race they are, or where they live. It's not about flags in Islam, okay? It's about la ilaha illallah, commitment to Allah. So by making those voluntary prayers, especially the taught or we, it helps to renew our allegiance. And when we talk about reading, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, encourage us to read. You don't have to, but he encourages us to read the Quran during this month because it'll keep us from becoming like the Christians and Jews. The Christians and Jews didn't read their books enough, so they forgot it. But by us reading the Quran more during this month, it helps to renew our commitment to Allah because by reading the Quran, your love for Allah will grow. That's your wala, your allegiance. Also, you will read about what happened, some of the struggles of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions that'll develop your allegiance and loyalty and love for him and your love for the other prophets of Allah and your love for all the other believers hearing about, uh, reading about the stories that happened to those that came before us. So by reading the Quran more, and for those of you, a lot of us don't have the time to read. But guess what? Joining my class every day, you're getting the reward of reading the Quran because I'm always, I always have one or two verses of the Quran in all my classes that I break, break down and explain because that's what it's all about, pondering. We don't, don't just read the Quran. We ponder the meaning. We ponder the meaning of it. And also we renew our commitment to Allah by doing away with bad deeds. A lot of you who smoke cigarettes, how many of you still wearing that Nicoderm patch? The Nicoderm patch does not break the fast. And a lot of the sisters, Sister Sandra, I hope you got your Nicoderm patches. A lot of you who've been coming to my classes began wearing them a week ago. So you should be less dependent on that nicotine. Nicotine is an intoxicant, okay? So you're gonna do away with this nasty, filthy habit of smoking cigarettes. You're gonna do away with uh, the bad deeds of backbiting and speaking badly about people because Ramadan is the month of refraining, refraining the tongue, refraining our, our body parts from engaging in evil. And also, 
What makes this month so special is this is the best time to repent for your sins because Allah is more forgiving this month than any other month of the year. Whatever bad deeds you did, it doesn't matter even if it was robbing a bank, Allah will forgive you. He's more forgiving this month than any other time of the year. So you want to also, and we talked about this, when it's time to break fast, make supplication. And again, your personal supplication. The, and we're going to go over that again. The prophet said the best time, one of the best times to make your personal supplication is when you break your fast. That's why I was telling one of the kids here, it ain't about learning no, nobody's doer. Learn, make your own doer. Oh Allah, right before you break fast. Oh Allah, for your sake have I fasted. Now I'm going to break my fast with sustenance provided by you. Oh Allah, forgive me of the way I mistreat my parents. Oh Allah, soften my, my, my tone when it comes to my parents. And oh Allah, help me to pass my final exams in school. And oh Allah, keep me upon the straight path. I mean, see that do I just made up? That's a supplication. And it doesn't have to be in Arabic. It can be in whatever language you speak. Anybody that tells you that your dua has to be in Arabic, tell them to show you the dalil because there's no such dalil that says that. Allah is the creator of language. He didn't make no mistake making you speak English. Are you crazy? So make your own dua. So whatever personal dua you have, whatever hardships you're going through in your personal life, guys, make that dua at the time that you break your fast. Because the prayer of the fasting person is always accepted. That's the hadith of the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's why we say it's the best time for repentance, especially right before you break your fast. Also, what makes this month so special is any good deeds that we do are multiplied more this month than any other time. Allah may reward you 200 times for doing a good deed uh, in Shaban, but that same deed, if you do it in Ramadan, Allah may reward it up to 700 times. Supana Allah. So all good deeds are multiplied during this month. That's why we tell you to do as many good deeds as you can. And as a diet, this is why I spend more time. I usually beef up. I beef up my classes. Like now, if you guys check the schedule on the Sooner Followers page, website, I added a new class. I added a new class to the lineup. Okay. I try to do this thing. that I can do is make Islam simple and easy for others. And also Allah frees people from the hellfire every night. He does that every night. But during the month of Ramadan, Allah frees even more people. That means he forgives even more people during Ramadan. So this is the best month of seeking forgiveness. And I want everyone, the children listening to, whatever bad sins you commit, this is the time to repent from them. And also, I want everybody to beware of breaking your fast without any valid excuse. I put this cheeseburger on the screen on purpose because you're surrounded by people who eat. You're living in a, a Western society. And as we've been talking about all year, when it comes to well, well better, our allegiance, it's all about keeping the fitra uh, awakened in a non-religious environment. So you're going to be surrounded by other people who eat when you go to school. When you go out the house, you're going to see McDonald's and all these restaurants. Don't be a dog. Don't be like a dog. Don't be like a dog and become a glutton and want to eat it. That's why I use this picture. The simple fact that you can resist that hamburger, you can resist looking at that and not wanting to eat it, that strengthens your relationship with Allah. 
But if you give in to that desire like a dog would and eat it, you've committed a major sin. I hope the children understand that. Don't be like this dog. Okay? You get rewards for saying no and turning away from the other people who are eating. That's better. Distance yourself. Okay? And for you brothers, and I repeat the brothers, I'm not talking to you women because one of the signs of the last hour is women will take on the actions of men and men will take on the actions of women. You go to the mosque, geez, you see a bunch of women breaking their necks trying to get in the mosque. You ain't no man. Go home. A woman's reward is at home. A woman gets more blessings praying by herself in her bedroom than praying at any mosque, even the prophet's mosque. So this ain't for you sisters. Y'all need to stay home. Turn your bedroom into a place of worship like I do, okay? But for the brothers, for the husbands and the boys, send your men to the mosque to do tarawee with the imam. The men should be at the masjids doing the tarawee prayer because the reward for the brothers is at the mosque praying behind the imam, not you sisters. Your reward is at home in your bedroom by yourself. I hope that's clear to all the women here. And guess what, sisters? If you send your husbands and sons to the mosque to pray, you get their reward. Again, this is the month of doubling up on rewards. So I'm not going to the mosque for tar week. I get more reward, reward praying at home by myself, but I'm going to make my husband go. I'm going to tell him to take all the boys with him too. Because if the men pray at the mosque, they'll get their past sins forgiven. And Tara, we is not in the streets. We got a lot of people of innovation praying out in the streets of Times Square. These people probably will be cursed by a law probably because the streets is not the place of worship. The mosque Jesus is. The mosque are Jesus are the houses of Allah, not the, the streets of the, of the of the Kafir Devil's Alley known as Times Square. So Tarawi is not outside in the streets. It's in the masajids, the masjids behind the Imam. Okay? So you brothers don't want to lose out on that. Also, Another way to benefit is to make sure that uh, the money that you earn is lawful. You don't want to be a doughboy. Y'all know what a doughboy is. Those are boys that sell drugs. Allah does not accept your good deeds. If your money is from unlawful sources, if you rob and steal and selling drugs, selling weed, Boosting, y'all know what I'm talking about. Boosting clothes and boosting watches. That stuff, th those are horrific sins. And Allah does not accept your charity or your good deeds. So I want, this is the time of cleaning your life up, changing your life for you young boys out there who sell drugs. It's time to stop. That fast money is going to get you a quick ticket to the hellfire. Because the lifespan of a dope boy is only three years. Either you're going to end up dead in the grave or, or behind bars doing time. So that fast money brings up a short lifespan for you. So it is time to repent from being a dope boy and start becoming a Muslim, a practicing Muslim, and leave that easy money of sin, of shaitan alone. Okay, go get a job, become a door dasher, Instacarter. They make that you make as much money as you want, door dashing, Instacarting. Plus, you work your own hours. All you need is a car. So you take your car and door dash and make money. Okay. Also, this is a word of advice to the people who fall in the category of sickness. Dr. Ali spoke about this yesterday. 
If you have a chronic illness, you should not even attempt to fast. Some sisters have had strokes and the strokes have them confined to the bed. You can't even walk. You can't even go to the toilet on your own. You don't need to be attempting to fast to do anything. And like, uh, and like uh, Dr. Ali was talking about, you guys don't understand you make Allah angry. Allah is the one that gave us these concessions. Allah hates fanaticism because a person that is a fanatic is a, is a person that makes the religion ugly and makes the religion hard. If you fall in the category of being exempt from fasting, all you're doing is, is rebelling against the law, making his anger. You're not getting rewarded for trying to fast when you know that you can't. You're getting making a law angry because you're basically killing yourself. You're basically killing yourself. And remember, that's a sin of disbelief. So don't allow your personal gin to get in your head and make you think, oh, that you losing out because you got a chronic illness. No, your ransom, paying the ransom, that is your fast. You're getting the same reward of a fasting person. In fact, you're getting double reward. You're getting double reward because number one, the ransom is your fast. Number two, the fact that you obeyed a law and you're taking advantage of his concession, that's the double reward. Do you sisters understand that? And then if you wanna even add more reward, invite a person who is fasting over to your house for dinner or order a dinner for somebody who is fasting. Let me tell y'all about one of my students, Sister Sarah. When I had my knee surgery, okay, and I was messed up and I couldn't fast because of the medication I was on, okay? I felt bad because it's normal. Shaitan would try to make you. But at the same time, my student Sarah was diagnosed with an eye problem or something was wrong with her. She couldn't fast either. But guess what Sarah did? Sarah sent me $25. She zailed me $25 and said, buy you a red lobster dinner. And oh my God, I said, the, the teacher learned from her student. I forgot that. If you feeling that bad about not being able to fast, pay for somebody that, is, that you know, to, to buy a meal for themselves. That is fasting. She didn't know that I wasn't fasting, but she still got the reward because she paid for somebody to eat, okay? So for you sisters who, who can't fast because you got sicknesses, you know, uh, 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 you know that somebody is fasting, you know, send them up some money to break their fat hair, order you some red lobster, you know, here's some money to take yourself out to dinner or something, or either cook a pot of soup for them and send it to them or cook a meal for them, you get the reward of their fast. So there's no reason for anybody who falls in the category of paying the ransom to feel left out. Your personal gen wants you to feel that way, but you have to resist him. And also to get the most of this month, the most rewards, beef up on your charity because good deeds are multiplied. So this is the best time to give money. I tell my students, Whatever money you have left over after paying your bills for the month, split it in half. Give half of it to your local masjid. That way you are helping the needy Muslims in your community. And then give the other half to this website because the, that way you're helping the Muslims around the world because the best gift you can give any Muslim is true knowledge and understanding of this religion. So whatever reward Allah gives me, gives Dr. Dramali, gives any of us, Sheikh Atli, Kareem Abuze, since we're using his books, whatever reward Allah has given us, you're getting that reward too because we wouldn't be able to do what we do if you guys didn't support the website, this website to keep me on the air. 
So this is the best time to increase your charity. And I always say that whatever money you have left over, the people most deserving are the Muslims in your community. So give half of it to your local mosque. And then the other half, donate it to the website, this website. So because it costs money for me to stream to all these platforms and make these videos and PowerPoints and stuff. So this is the best time to increase your charity and get extra rewards. And again, you don't want to fall in the trap of shaitan and lose out on the rewards of fasting. A lot of people lose out by spending their time doing nothing. You don't want to be one of those people who sleep all day and you wake up just to break fast. So you stay up all night and then go to sleep at Fajr. You want to, don't want to be that person. That's a person that has lost out on fasting because you're supposed to spend the fasting time doing deeds to please Allah. And now what I wanna do is go over some tips, some tips for a successful fast. I encourage everyone to eat sahur in the morning because it's a blessing. What's the blessing? The prophet said, whatever, even if it's an apple, even if it's a banana, Whatever you eat for sahur, Allah will cause that, that food to give you the energy to make it through the rest of the day. So I encourage everyone and tell the kids, eat a bowl of cereal, you know, eat an apple, a banana, drink a bottle of water, and you can eat all the way up until the adhan for fajr is called. Also another tip, make sure that we break fast on time. You don't want to be late breaking your fast. When the adhan for my grib is pronounced, break your fast. Because when we break our fast on time, it's we earn Allah's love. And remember, Allah has promised anyone whom he loves, he will never allow the hellfire to touch them. Also, and when you're fasting, you do not want to use profanity. This is what Mukhtar was speaking about yesterday. A lot of us lose out on the rewards of fasting by cursing, using profanity. Try to control your tongue. Don't indulge in backbiting either or gossip. Don't go around gossiping and slandering people. So again, as you're fasting, you want to make sure that if, do like the prophet said, the prophet said, if you don't have anything good to say, then just shut up. If you have nothing positive to say about anything, then just tape your lips closed. Because these type of actions will uh, decrease your rewards. Also, another tip, control your temper. Remember, your personal gin is still with you. Your personal gin is going to push you to be a fanatic. He's going to push you to get angry. He's going to push you to do all kinds of bad things. So control your temper. Do not allow him to get the best of you. And finally, make dua. Make lots of dua for others. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone who makes dua for the believers, Allah will reward you for every believer whom you make dua for. And also guys, don't forget to make dua for the Muslims in the world who are struggling, the Muslims in Gaza, the Muslims in, in Sudan, the Muslims in Nigeria, the Muslims in Brunei, it, all the Muslims on earth. Make dua for all the Muslims on earth who are struggling. So those are uh, just uh, uh, some tips. And uh, I always like to uh, start uh, the month of Ramadan uh, off with that, how do we can make the most. And like I said, uh, what I'm gonna do for this month, I'm gonna take you on this journey of fasting. Every day I'm gonna walk you through uh, what, how, why this month is so important, what we should be doing uh, for this month and the likes.